Hey guys and welcome to the render interface overview for dimensions and stamp in Blender. Now stamp refers to the metadata section which we'll go over in a second, but I want to go over dimensions first because it's pretty intuitive and easy to understand. So we have the resolution value which is at 1920 by 1080p by default. Uh, you can change this to whatever you want and when you do, I'm looking through the main camera right now and I can do that simply by pressing the zero on the number pad. And when you do that, it'll change the camera dimensions. So I'll just go ahead and set this back 1920. But um, yeah, that's basically, it will change the dimensions of your camera. Now, if we go ahead and set this value to 50%, um, I believe it's typically at 50%, this value here is actually a scalar for resolution. So while we do have 1080p, uh, it is only at 50% resolution if we render with this at 50%, which means it'll be actually 1960 by 540, which is not 1080p at all, right? So whenever you're doing test renders and stuff like that, 50% is a pretty useful thing to have. It goes a lot faster, and you get a general idea of what it's supposed to look like anyway. But if you want to do the final render, you're going to want to do 100%. So make sure you keep that in mind when you're rendering. The next stuff is start frame, end frame. This is pretty intuitive stuff. It's basically just the end and beginning of our timeline here. So that's pretty simple stuff, pretty intuitive. You can see the timeline moving in the bottom. The frame step is a value that defines whether you're going to render every single frame or every other frame or every third frame or every fourth frame. So basically that means how many frames you're going to skip before you render the next frame in the sequence. So most of the time it should be just one. You're not skipping any frames. It's just going to render every single frame each step is one frame, so you just do one frame. Now, some people might want to stylize it or account for some sort of remapping, and you're gonna wanna render every two frames or every three frames instead, so you skip a few frames in between. But uh, that is there for you if you need it. This might be good for testing out some animations. Maybe you wanna render every other frame just to render it out faster or something like that. But yeah, that's frame step. You also have the frame rate, which is the FPS. Pretty simple to understand. You have anywhere between uh, 24 to 60, as well as custom, where you can set it yourself. Entirely up to you. I typically use 24. Now, aspect ratio is a value that basically it sort of multiplies the current aspect ratio you already have set with the resolution. Um, it's not super necessary if you already know your resolution, but if you were to do, uh, for example, uh, 2000 by 2000, right? Uh, so it's a square, but then you're saying, oh, I want it to be 16 by 9, which is 1920 by 1080. That's the aspect ratio of that. Well, then there you go. It looks pretty much the same thing, right? So it's it's a multiplier. Um, it's not super necessary if you already know your resolution, but it's there for you. Um, you also have the border option, which is pretty interesting. If you check that, you'll notice that there's actually a red border now around your camera. This camera border can be changed to whatever border you want. By default, it's the entire camera view, which is the same as if you didn't check it at all, right? It's basically, it'll render out the whole thing. But you can actually hit Control B and define, for example, I just want to render this half of the cube. Just that border will be rendered. So if I go ahead and hit F12 here to render, it will render out that section and then place it on the full resolution image. So you have a 1080p uh, render with just that half rendered out. Um, you can also do crop, and that will just do the same thing, except it won't put it on that 1080p image at the end. It'll just keep it at whatever resolution you cropped it as. Um, so you can also get rid of this by hitting Control alt b and then your border will disappear. And if you turn border back on, it'll go back to default around the, uh, the camera. So go ahead and turn that off. Uh, you also have time remapping, which basically remaps your number of frames to a new number of frames when you render out. So it's usually 100 to 100 so that it's one for one. But if you ever wanted to remap the time and slow it down, for example, you would want the new number to be bigger. So this would slow it down to, you know, to 2.5 times the length. Uh, and if you want to speed it up, you could do 50 and then that'd be twice as fast. So, so that's just in case you want to change the speed of your animation during render. Um, but yeah, that's it for dimensions. Let's go into metadata because this is really useful as well, especially for work in progress and for studios and stuff like that. Now, basically what a stamp is, is you literally stamp information onto your render at the output stage. So I'm gonna go ahead and check this box so that we actually have that on there. And then I'm gonna render with F12 and you'll notice that this will render out just fine, just like normal, but at the end, you're gonna notice a few more details. And here we go. So you'll notice here we have file untitled, which is the name of this file, um, with the date, with the time, the render time, and stuff like that. 
we have a uh, time code and we have uh, name of the scene name of the camera stuff like that frame number so you can define what information you want to display on those stamps there and this text is a little bit small so we can actually adjust it through here I'm gonna go ahead and double that text size render it again and see what that looks like it should be a little bit easier to read so you can change the font size here uh, you can change the background actually as well you can make the background instead of transparent you can make it black so for example here we have a, uh, oh, a slightly transparent, yeah, that's right, we have a slightly transparent black background here. We can actually make this entirely transparent. We can make the text color red or something. Uh, as you can notice, the font size is bigger now, so that's nice. Um, waiting for this to render again, and we'll see the text color change and the background change, for example. Um, pretty cool stuff. Let's see, here we go, here we go. Uh, yeah, so we have red text with no uh, background box there. And um, there's a couple other things we can change. Let's go ahead and change this back to white and this to 0.25 there we go now you can also turn off draw labels and that will actually render it out without any labels for each of the different information things here and you'll notice here this used to say file name and date and whatever and render time but now it doesn't you just took away those labels and you just have to assume what those are now um, but uh, it's an option if you want to save some space and it's pretty nice to have uh, once you have that stamp data out there um, you can define what you want. So I can check memory. If I check memory, then it'll probably show me some memory stats. For example, here we go. Peak memory, we have 0.72 megabytes. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's basically how that works. It's pretty simple, but it's a really nice option to have. And you can also write a note here. So I can be like, this is a test. And then I'll go ahead and render that out. And that note should appear right on the render. This is a test. So you can probably define it, talk about what you want to change, talk about how it's a work in progress, talk about who animated it, for example, stuff like that. So yeah, that's basically it. There's a couple things you can play around with here. And that's the overview for dimensions and metadata for Blender's render interface.